I'm Meg O'Hearn. Um, I've met many of you. I'm the Community and Events Coordinator for the IIIF Consortium. Um, welcome to IIIF Week. Um, we're trying to keep everyone muted just because we have large audiences for the events today. So um, uh, we can unmute pe people to ask questions or you can just type them into the chat because we're in a meeting rather than a webinar today. Um, most of the other events um, that happened this week were in webinar format. Um, if you'd like to join the conversation on Slack and you're not yet on the IIIF Slack channel, uh, just send us an email at events at uh, IIIF uh, .io and we'll um, send you an invite from the Slack workspace. I know a few people had mentioned that they were unable to join uh, in previous sessions through a Google form that we had set up. Um, so just send a message to that address if that was the case and we'll get you signed up. Um, and just a note, um, you probably saw when you joined the meeting, but we're recording. Um, so we'll send the recordings out for all the sessions to everyone who registered uh, after the events uh, are over. Um, so that's about it, and I'll hand things over to the presenters. Cool. Thank you, Meg. You're welcome. Um, I think I need uh, to be a co-host or a host now to share my screen. Are you? I just changed the setting. Yeah, I am. Got it. Got it. Got it. Great. Thanks. Um, okay. Does look, look good for everyone? Oh, yep. let's go back to the beginning. Always good to start at the beginning. Okay. Um, welcome to the IIIF Community 3D Community Group update. Um, Ronald Haynes from Cambridge University Ed Silverton from Nemocene and myself, Thomas Flynn from Sketchfab, um, are the co-chairs of the group and we'll be presenting uh, today. So uh, we'll be jumping between us so you'll hear a few different voices. Um, oh, there's a little bit of 3D for you um, off the bat. The, you know, we'll introduce the group um, and, and talk about, uh, or rather share what we have been talking about in the group and um, give an idea of the direction and the route uh, we see at the moment uh, into the future of interoperability for 3D in the cultural heritage in Guyam space. I'm just going to pause and let Ronald or uh, Ed jump in if I've uh, missed anything. Uh, sounds good. <laughs> yeah, no, thanks. Um, and it's obviously a very interactive group, as you'll see from our, some of the examples from recent presentations. Thanks. Nice. And um, I think Ronald, you're, you're sharing a link to the, the presentation in the chat or you, you have? Um, doing it now. Awesome, thanks. You can click that uh, image, the spinning IIIF if you want to get your hands on a 3D model of the logo as well, I should say. Um, Ronald, were you gonna start here or should I? I was going to say we finished. We've got a three D triple I mean, yeah. <laughs> we've succeeded in our mission. That's all that was required. Yeah. Uh, you go ahead, uh, Tom, if that's all right. Sure, sure. Um, just as a quick um, overview of the group, um, it's a three D community group, um, uh, and it meets every month. Uh, last Thursday, no, third Thursday of the month. We've had 14 calls over the last year um, and the focus is very much on knowledge sharing and discussion. Um, we've had some really great presentations um, from some of the attendees listed here uh, or, um, you know, conversation starters. The sessions um, uh, often include some, some specific presentations from an organization or on a specific topic, um, but there's, there's normally um, a kind of after um, after hours double session. So kind of one, one hour uh, for the main community group meeting and then another hour of the so-called pub session where um, conversation is, is free flowing and um, often throws up some interesting points and ideas. Uh, I've already introduced the co-chairs, but if you want to um, contact us or follow up with us um, after this call, please do. Um, everybody is welcome to, to join the group whether you are already making 3D, thinking about making 3D, or are just interested in, in what we're doing, um, you can uh, find uh, a link to the 
the group calls on the, the AAAF uh, website. So I'm going to hand over to Ed, who's going to give a bit of an idea of uh, what itch we are scratching with the 3D group. And Ed, if you just tell me when you want a new slide. Uh, yeah, okay, next. <laughs> um, so we have identified that this, the 3D itch, as we're putting it, is uh, common between kind of large and small organizations. So here we've got two examples of that. We've got the Smithsonian and we've got um, Brighton Museum and Art Gallery uh, where I live. And um, <clears throat> both kind of interested in, you know, both obviously have objects in their collections that they're interested in. <laughs> the Smithsonian have done a, on a very low, huge scale and, uh, you know, uh, Royal Pavilion Museums are kind of also interested in this on a, you know, markedly smaller scale, but still it's, the, it's you know, it's 3D content, right? Um, and so we thought we'd kind of talk about uh, what Smithsonian have, have done and what um, Royal Pavilion Museums have done. And uh, really, you know, that every, what we're doing as a group should be accessible for a range of sizes of organizations. Um, next, please. So first slide's about um, the Smithsonian's 3D program. Uh, as I said, it's on a huge scale. Um, the exploring the recent millions of digital items in their collections. Um, they launched with 2.8 million uh, in February of this year. Um, I'm not actually sure the number of 3D objects they have. Um, I, I don't know that information, but- A I, few I, thousand. A few thousand, okay. Um, and they have embraced um, CC0, so uh, also kind of Creative Commons. Um, license that means you know waiving copyright you don't have to ask permission to do anything you can just download it and make anything use it in any way you like <clears throat> um they're also making images available uh by the triple f format i should mention that the 3d they're doing isn't you know quote triple f at the moment uh you know because no one's is because there is no triple f 3d but um they are doing 3d images uh, sorry triple f images um the three D formats they're using are um, GLTF, GLB. GLB is like a type; it's a binary form of GLTF. Uh, OBJ, which has been around for a very long time, and uh, Voyager scenes, uh, which I'd be interested to learn more about. Actually, I don't really know anything about that. Um, and they are making metadata available in text, uh, JSON format, and and Figshare. Uh, next, please. Um, so, Royal Pavilion Museums, this, this is the kind of body that, that's, that manages the museums in Brighton and Hove, uh, operated by the City Council. Um, they're they're going to move to a trust very soon, I think. Um, so, yeah, they manage more publications. Um, we, I, did, I worked on a project for them which was making the, some of the stuff available over IIIF. They're very excited about embracing IIIF. Uh, I think. Um, you know, sometimes it's you know, the perception of AAAF may be that it's for very, you know, for the bigger institutions, but I think that's changing. Um, so yeah, they they are using the University for that. Um, they have a WordPress blog that they they're using to share share their kind of images and three D objects. Um, they have very very few three D objects right now, um, but possibly increasing that in future um, and. The ability to use IIIF to share content on their on their blog that they launched um, has really increased traffic to their site. So IIIF is kind of doing working wonders there. Um, it's very um, yeah, it's cheap to run for them. Um, we're using something by Northwestern University, um, serverless IIIF, which is very cheap and affordable. Um, they're using uh, Google's Model Viewer, open source Model Viewer for GLB files, um, and they're also making metadata available, uh, and everything's also CC0. So again, not just for the, the big organizations, um, everyone can do uh, you know, public access content if they like. Uh, okay, next, please. Uh, is it still me, or are we switching now? I think this one's for me. Um, yeah. 
Um, okay. So, I mean, across those those two examples, but um, across um, all cultural organizations that are currently producing 3D, and there are you know many uh, around the world, big ones, small ones, um, creating 3D. There, there's a huge um, variation in um, production methods. Obviously, there's a huge variation in collections, like kind of what things are being digitized in 3D, um, but also the, the production workflows. So everything from how uh, something is being captured or created in 3D, so the production methods, um, a few listed here, photogrammetry, laser scanning, structured light, X-ray CT, and 3D modeling. All of these produce um, slightly different um, pieces of 3D data. Um, photogrammetry, I'm you know, going to say, is, is the most common um, way that cultural organizations, clam organizations, are producing 3D at the moment. Um, but the, the volume of uh, th 3D um, is increasing, I think, across all um, of these these production methods. Um, as mentioned, the, the output formats, whether it's the, the file formats or the, the kind of 3D data, whether it's a, a mesh, a surface model, or a point cloud, a series of, of points in 3D space um, depicting a, a 3D object, or volumetric data, um, typically coming out of X-ray CT scanning. Um, there's, again, a huge variation of, of, of what different softwares um, produce and different techniques um, output. Uh, and then, so there's this idea of well, how do you find a, a common common way to um, access those those files? Um, the three D that is produced um, may have undergone post production. It, it may not have undergone post production. So the idea of optimizing a three D model for different audiences, the um, easiest way to think about that is um, converting a high resolution TIFF image to a JPEG image, maybe scaling it down for a thumbnail on a website. Um, the, the same uh, kind of conundrum exists for um, 3D. Um, it can get a little bit more complicated um, depending on uh, what your use case is uh, for a 3D model. But typically, there's, there's a, a consensus that you have the high resolution or the highest resolution master data set from which you can derive um, lower uh, or rather optimized um, 3D data for different uh, use cases, AR, VR, online. Um, perhaps uh, animation has been added as well. Um, things have been done to the data essentially um, to make it do different things. So across different 3D viewers, which I think we'll, we'll, we'll talk about in a bit, um, you know, we need to figure out support for um, everything that somebody might be publishing within their 3D data, uh, including metadata. Is it being captured? Is it being embedded in the file? Does it exist separately? Is, are, there, are there standards? Um, we'll see in a bit uh, who's working on those, those, those questions. Um, and then very you know, simple uh, differences between uh, 3D models. Which way is up? Which is the up axis on a 3D model? Uh, different softwares decide uh, to point the 3D model uh, up for example, on the Y axis or uh, on the Z axis, uh, which can you know, lead to the same 3D model appearing a, in a different orientation in two different 3D viewers. Really basic stuff like that needs to be figured out how big the, the model is. Are the scale units in centimeters, millimeters, or you know, kilometers? Uh, is that baked into the, um, the file in some way from the, the um, authoring software? Uh, where is the pivot? Is it you know, in the center of the volume? Is it at the bottom, the top? Um, it, can, it can vary depending on how you've created your, your 3D. Uh, and finally, um, different workflows um, for 3D exist within organizations that have different approaches to open access. And one thing that came up through the course is, is this idea of um, you can't really have interoperability without some kind of open access program without making your data available um, and to, to you know, fairly high level things to consider there are the copyright of what you are publishing um, and then the, the licensing uh, or dedication that you are using to, um, to put it online that lets people do or not do certain things with it. I'm going to say Ronald. 
for yep, this slide. Thank Hi, thanks, Tom. Um, so uh, one of the things we've tried to, one of the points we try to come back to often is the idea of starting at the end. What's our goal? What's our end point? And Tom and Ed have mentioned some of those things, uh, how, it's going, how files will be shared, how models will be uh, interoperable. But uh, a number of the groups who are natural partners and with whom we keep close contact, who participate in our discussions, include the CS3DP, Community Standards for 3D Data Preservation, which probably has more influence so far in North America. There is a, a sort of parallel partner, Digital Preservation Coalition here in the UK and across into some of the continental European countries. But those two are in close contact and working together for the same sort of goals. What would, uh, what would be required for files to be preserved and usable well into the future? So as Tom was saying, we have to worry about copyright and open access now, but what will not uh, have a very short shelf life? And we'll say more later, the European Task Force on 3D Content and a shout out to Kate Fernie and others of that group are on this call. Um, they had a, a year long focus and are looking to follow up on um, what would be involved in integrating more 3D models in the very large Europeana project, which is trying to digitize the cultural heritage of Europe. It's been going for about 10 years. There are links in uh, our slides, which you can access later on the report and an article about it. And uh, indeed, there was a whole article um, issue um, about 3D from the Europeana Tech Insight magazine, which, I, which would be worth looking at. I'll hand over. So there's quite a kind of range of viewers and file formats available. And this is no means exhaustive. Um, so 3D Hop uh, is a popular one. Uh, X3D, Sketchfab, Smithsonian have a, uh, um, a viewer they've made with Voyager. There's uh, Aleph, which is a project for uh, what for source. Um, we heard Google talk about their model viewer project on the last call. Um, and obviously there's the universal viewer um, and that kind of wraps up model viewer and uh, Aleph. Um, and then there's a, a bunch of different file formats. Uh, OBJ, as I said, has been around just a very long time. PLY, PLY is kind of for you know, point data. STLs are very good for kind of 3D printing. Um, GLTF, GLB, uh, they're from the, the Kronos group. Um, so, you know, kind of emerging standard there. Um, USDZ, so, you know, previous calls, we've talked about the relative merits of, they seem like there's kind of the current front runners really in the kind of uh, file format kind of sphere, if you like. Um, so USDZ is uh, kind of came out of Pixar originally, um, and they're working with Apple, and it's a kind of a format you can use for, um, you have to use in fact for augmented reality if you're on an iOS device. Um, uh, there's X3D, which is a kind of, uh, again, been around a long time, um, came out of VRML originally, I believe, um, and is an ISO standard. Uh, DICOM is for representing medical data volumes. Uh, and uh, NXS is uh, Nexus, which is uh, the kind of the format that um, 3D Hop uses. So there's a kind of baffling array of <laughs> options. Um, uh, and everyone's kind of using uh, their own kind of, everyone's scratching their own itch, if you like. Um, and some people are creating their own formats even. Um, uh, and we're kind of, I guess the role of our group is to keep, we can't, I don't think we can really hope to steer or we should aim to steer people onto a particular format. Um, we should just make people appraised of the options that are out there and how they may work for their use case. I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's we're not talking images, we're not talking JPEGs here. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a totally different kind of ballpark. There's so, so many more use cases, I think. Um, so, um, some of these f formats are multi-resolution, so uh, Nexus and uh, GLTF 
the Nexus is a kind of streaming format, so it can load bits at a time. Uh, and GLTF uh, has support for loading, which is a level of detail. Um, so it can load a low resolution model first, and then uh, given a bit more time, it will replace it with a bigger model or detailed model. Um, so the, recently we've kind of just started um, to try and demonstrate uh, in, interoperability between viewers uh, in terms of annotation. Uh, so there was a recent example I put together where I've been creating kind of annotations in Aleph and uh, I actually, you know, I think this is how standards and, you know, these kinds of groups really work is that, you know, I'm, I've been working on a project and I, I didn't want to do the annotation system in such a way that I was kind of going down a route that wasn't you know, interoperable. I, I wanted to see how Model Viewer was doing it, and make sure I was kind of doing it the same way. Um, and uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of value in that to, to stop projects becoming kind of cold sacked, I guess. So, um, yeah, we don't, we've been able to demonstrate interoperability between the, these two viewers. Um, Voyager is on, on the list as well. I'm not sure I've seen that, uh, but I. I um, Either Tom or Ronald put that in, but that's, I'm sure it does. Um, I think that might be the, the the question of interoperability because Voyager, obviously Sketchfab as well, includes uh, okay. yeah, the yeah. ability to add annotations. But yeah, your your model yeah. viewer ALF for the only existing demos. And right. we have to make, we have some examples later, Ed, so we'll come back to it. Yeah, um, but it seems like it's kind of you know again, you know, uh, Federico is on the call and he's he's written a fantastic paper on all the various kinds of annotation. Uh, again, it's, it's, it's like the list of file formats. It's, you know, they cover lots of different use cases. A annotation is not simply limited to a point on a surface. It can, could be all kinds of different things, like annotating a, a volume or a, a plane or, you know, all, all kinds of things. So we're re really just at the beginning of that. Um, uh, yeah, and as I mentioned earlier, there's no, there's no agreed uh, manifest format for triple F three D, although there is a kind of de facto kind of way um, at the moment if you want to do it, but it's it's not kind of an official way to do it. And that's something else, along with annotations, we could hopefully try and work on as a group. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Um, before we leave this slide, just a note on the um, the button down the bottom tinyurl.com forward slash triple F3D workflows. Um, we've created just a form to gather um, workflows. Uh, I think it's very simple, three, three, four questions about um, how you or your organization are producing 3D data um, to help us get a, a kind of broader idea of um, who's using what um, and you know kind of where efforts in the short term, uh, long term will be best um, spent and we'll obviously be um, sharing any uh, results on the future calls. Thanks for that, Tom. Thanks, Ed. Um, really encourage people to give us some feedback. It'll help in future discussion and help you engage with the group uh, if you haven't already. Um, so uh, we sort of have two options, which is to do what arguably a lot of people have done, saying it's impossible, there's just too many options, etc. Or try to find some lenses through which some of, uh, some of the, the various uh, aspects will be focused a bit more and are doing so in, in the wild, as it were. So uh, we look for anything that might help reduce entropy in the system, uh, if that's at all possible, some argue. Um, there are two things that are at least worth keeping in mind. We mentioned um, X3D earlier, Ed did, and the Web3D group, don't know if we have any representatives on this call, but we've had presentations from them. They are the inheritors of a third generation from VRML, which grew up in the early days of the web, became an ISO standard. They have multiple versions of it. You don't want to overplay it, but it has very important uses in certain areas and a good publication track record. There's a link to an example of showing two different skulls from different parts of the uh, primate family one modern human, one earlier. And they, it just shows an interesting sort of thing that they can do by linking models. But there are a lot of other options. It's just worth 
seeing. What's important is it will work through browsers or certainly have uh, versions of that. Um, the other thing that's been happening in uh, extending HTML5 and in modern browsers is the WebXR initiative. And that comes out of, among others, the Immersive Web Working Group. It has lots of big level support and it can um, deliver to ordinary mobile devices, modern mobile devices, um, a good experience of XR, AR, VR, MR, all ours. And uh, that's become very important for a lot of organizations that want to deliver on something familiar and affordable. Uh, so encouraged to say to follow these links and we can say more in future discussions. Next slide, please, Tom. Cool. Um, I'll try and um, do these next slides a bit quicker because we want to leave time for questions. This um, this slide is literally just um, a quick idea of you know the the vision around why and how you know interoperability might um, enhance the work that um, is being done at cultural organisations. So first, there's a, a digitisation event. Somebody pops a, an object into the 3D digitization box and hits go, then they go home for the night. The next morning, the 3D model, which has been optimized, it's been checked, it's been um, you know put the right way around, scaled correctly, is published um, publicly on, on the organization's um, web servers. And then once it's out there, this triggers off a whole bunch of other, other things that happen. Uh, one of them is that the, the data can be duplicated and sent to different uh, platforms and viewers that can be um, kind of um, uh, backed up in, in a sense as well, um, all automatically, you know, this is, you know, a very visionary um, sort of idea. Um, there's also specific work that might be um, done within the organization, for example, a curator um, adding annotations to a 3D model um, that are then uh, saved uh, in some way on, on the same servers and attached to a particular model. Um, the the same 3D model or the, a version of it is is published out to social media feeds and is, is viewable in, in VR and AR uh, all seamlessly um, as, as technology develops, assuming people have access to um, internet and, and the right devices. Um, later on, maybe in, in a day after publication, uh, educators can access the enriched 3D file to um, to help in in their classes using the annotations that were added by the the curator earlier that day. Um, Fifty years down the line, um, a gaming company um, is looking at browsing 3D assets in their um, 3D editing software um, to add to their latest scene, and they can search and find um, specific. Um, objects, artifacts, scenes, scans, 3D models um, from cultural heritage organizations. And through this engagement in, in general and reuse, um, a 3D asset is made more valuable uh, and, and the awareness of, uh, of the 3D model um, as a valuable asset is, um, is promoted. And there's probably more here. Um, we, you know, I'd love to hear what other people think as well. Um, current state of AAAF 3D, then um, I'll just give a quick quick roundup of this. This kind of loops back to an introduction, introduction to the group. The genesis of the project is, is from conversations in a breakout session at AAAF conference in Rome in 2017. And the community group was formed in 2018 um, by Stuart Snyderman and Ed Silverton. Um, the charter um, is worth a read. Um, it, it's really uh, sets the the, the reason for the, the group right now is to is to help people um, begin the journey to gather everyone together uh, to facil facilitate conversations about open standards that support 3D use cases. And I think we're, we're doing a pretty good job of that so far, if I say so myself. Um, the group has held 24 community calls since then, um, since 2018, and plus group meetings and breakout sessions at conferences in AAAF conferences in Washington and Göttingen. Um, this is a, is a lovely list of, of everybody or the organizations that have um, joined the calls. Um, I think it's a great 
um, indication of the, the range of um, people attending the calls from um, GLAM organizations to commercial companies, uh, nonprofits, universities. There's a huge range of um, perspectives um, being shared. Um, not everybody joins a call uh, each, each month, um, but it's been great to find out what different um, people are doing with regards to, to 3D. Um, there are you know, publishing platforms like um, Google X3D, Sketchfab, um, as well as the people who are producing the 3D as well. Um, and uh, I think this is a good, uh, a fertile ground of, of knowledge and ideas and uh, perspectives for the, for the group to move on uh, to future work. Okay, thanks, Tom. Um, this slide is a, is a tricky one and a difficult one, but hopefully will engage us for a long time. Um, it's an attempt to boil down uh, some points and key questions that were raised some years ago in a IIIF con uh, workshop uh, gathering at the Victorian Albert Museum in London. And also uh, some paper Ed already mentioned from uh, Federico Poncio who's on this call. Shout out to you, Federico. And some others engagement we've had. And I, I won't read them all one by one because you'll have copies and we can bring them up in discussion. But there are key areas, um, starting with a very simple one. Can I show a 3D object via IIIF today? And those of you who were on the Mirador call yesterday, that question came up with Mirador, and the answer is the same for all viewers that view IIIF um, objects, which is, yes, it's possible to make a call out or a connection. And uh, we, we want to refine some of that and even do some work on recipes to make it a little easier. Uh, so maybe we'll say that at some at the end. Annotations have been mentioned. We have a couple of examples, in fact, three from existing viewers and 3D model use. Uh, something that um, needs to be emphasized because it wasn't obvious to everyone in the start. For IIIF to be IIIF, things have to be interoperable. And that ultimately should mean 2D and 3D can be intermingled on the same web page. We have some examples of that in the wild. But uh, that's something we want to keep in the sights as we continue this journey to try to work toward IIIF 3D. Um, units and resolution, some of this was mentioned, scaling, orientation, painting, lighting, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so there's a lot to take on. This is a bit of a condensed uh, format, but hopefully we can continue to unpack this and adjust as we go along. I'll hand over. Over to you, Ed. You know, isn't it? Um, so the way forward, um, it's a well-trodden path at this point. Um, what the IIIF community do is they gather user stories, and they're the kind of um, units of uh, knowledge that help us kind of uh, move forwards, I suppose. Um, so, yeah, it's the kind of simplest possible expression of a piece of functionality, um, e.g., um, you know, one that came up earlier, which is uh, a preferred view, uh, initial orientation of a 3D object would be a, uh, probably a very common one people would you know, mention. Um, and then uh, we've got a, a kind of something citing uh, Atlassian um, explanation of this. Um, user stories are system requirements often expressed as a persona plus a need plus a purpose. Um, so um, the, the, the IIIF AV group um, did, followed a kind of process um, where they gathered user stories. They, they would have kind of, a, a, I think they had a, several summits where they'd get together, um, spend the day collecting, talking about their, um, their use cases and uh, writing them down in this kind of persona need purpose kind of format. Uh, they were using um, GitHub for that, GitHub issues, but really you can write, you know, as an X, I want to do Y so that Z, you know, you can write them wherever you like. Um, and we're actually thinking that not so, you know, maybe the, with the AV group, they were more kind of um, technically kind of familiar with things like GitHub. But we're actually thinking to create a, maybe it's on the next slide, we've got a, a form um, mm. 
we're, we're, we're kind of using Google Google Forms as much as possible because it's very accessible. Let's go to the next slide. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> um, so there's our form. Uh, we encourage people to to fill that out, and uh, we will that will, that will give us our uh, you know our user stories and our kind of grist for the mill, if you like, to kind of move move things forward. Um, and then you know as the group kind of proceeds we can um refer back to them uh and maybe once you've got them a lot of them in you know see this google form maybe we'll, we can then start moving them over to github issues um for, for reference so yeah and then they'll they'll become a point of reference and we can refine them um these things take a lot of discussion before they're kind of uh, they're, they're sort of locked in uh, as it were so uh, yeah, that's how that's that's how we do it. Um, so yeah, please do fill out the form and uh, yeah. Yes, yes. Um, we wanted to finish on um, just a, a kind of a quick run through of some of the the recent presentations and and what they've included uh, on the calls. Um, going back to the idea of user stories, each call pretty much um, involves somebody presenting uh, a user story. But the form uh, and the way forward we see is, is to capture those um, a bit more uh, in a bit more of an organized way. Um, uh, so um, one interesting um, project um, is uh, a website called the Elevation API dot com, um, which is a super interesting online um, 3D model generator that basically allows you to choose different open um, uh, elevation data um, sources. You can draw a rectangle on a map. Um, it works even on your um, smartphone. I tried it the other day. It's it's a really nice um, kind of experience. So I, I recommend trying it. Draw a rectangle on the map. Um, produce a 3D model with um, some open elevation uh, data and also uh, open um, either satellite imagery or um, uh, a different coloring um, map coloring method. And then it um, creates a, a GLTF file, um, and you can also di directly export to Sketchfab. Um, Javier, who um, created the platform, um, I got in contact with him uh, a while ago, having just tried it out and thinking it was very cool. And using uh, the Sketchfab API and his own work, he was able to kind of connect that. So this idea of um, with the right technical know-how, being able to kind of um, join to two platforms, two connections, ways to produce 3D models. I think this is a, is a really nice example. This is a uh, screen, uh, screen grab from a video um, of um, the Cleveland Museum of Arts Art Lens um, Gallery. And up on the wall there is projection of a 3D model. Um, it's actually a Sketchfab embed. Um, so it's, it's kind of pulled from the same 3D model that is uh, available on the museum Sketchfab page, and the person in the in the picture is using um, a Microsoft Connect. You can probably see just down beneath the the, the um, 3D model, the PD. Um, there's a little light, and that's a Microsoft Connect, which reads your movements, and you can kind of open your hand, grab, and rotate the um, the 3D model to look at it from all sides. And the objects are kind of behind you in the gallery. Um, and this is another, you know nice example of um, the utility of 3D. It's not just online, it can be in gallery. And also the way that you interact with it um, should be you know, via a mouse and keyboard, via your smartphone, um, using your, your whole body, what, whatever kind of the, 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 the best, easiest way to interact with the 3D is. And there's a video uh, to show you it in action. Um, some images of the digitization work um, at the Cleveland Museum of Art, digitizing um, a lamp. Uh, I believe it was digitized both in, in 3D, both on and off, so that when it's presented um, online, you can uh, see the, the kind of, in some ways, the essence of the 3D model. There was a lot of post-processing done. The model is animated. Um, it's, it's some really nice work being done um, over at um, Cleveland to um, really bring 3D models to life. Uh, and you know what the triple f um, community group would hope is that that would be then possible to to be viewed or, or reused again and again um, i'm not sure if the tiffany lamp is but the um, 
the two 3D models in the background here are available under uh, CC0, um, ready for download um, or access via API on Sketchfab. Uh, Ed, do you want to take this? Sure. Um, so this was a presentation uh, on our last call by Sophie Dixon. Um, she was talking about some work she did for the Science Museum to uh, kind of um, refine some of their 3D models on Sketchfab. So in the top left, we've got an acupuncture doll. Um, she kind of worked to optimize that uh, so it would load faster um, and uh, kind of improve the materials so that uh, the, you know the eyes were kind of had a glassy kind of material on them things like that uh, there's a leeches jar on the top right this is um, believe it or not animated leeches in it <laughs> so you can look inside and they're all wiggling around it's quite phenomenal um, Bottom left, uh, this is a um, 3D model of a carbolic steam spray. They used to, another, you know, believe it or not moment, they, uh, they used to spray acid gas at people in hospitals because uh, they thought it kind of <laughs> cleaned things. Um, so yeah, that was, well, that's a video um, actually with uh, some, some fire, uh, particle, fire particle system and, and the, the, the handle turns and gas comes out. And then um, we have a, I believe, a seismograph machine um, on the bottom right. And uh, this is kind of completely remodeled in, in Blender. So it started off as a photogrammetry object. But um, in order to kind of animate all these little arms and uh, you know, moving and uh, the, the lid opens and everything, um, it was necessary to kind of use the photogrammetry as a, as a reference and then remodel it. Um, so uh, that's another kind of interesting use case for photogrammetry. It's not always, you know, in, in the case of all of these examples, it's just the beginning, really. It's not the end result. Um, uh, next, please. Uh, this is another example from Sophie's uh, presentation. This is using uh, Google's uh, model viewer. So I actually worked on this as well as an experiment to see if we could get um, animation to work. And uh, I'm quite interested in this particular library X state, they're doing uh, state machines. So we had the idea to combine that with Molvia. Uh, uh, and so you can click open and close the box and it will open and close. And when it's open, it plays a sound, plays the music and the, the dancer rotates. Uh, and Molvia, as, as long as you um, provide a USDZ equivalent, which is actually very easy to do, um, you, can see it in uh, augmented reality, and uh, that's that's it on a table, and it's animating, and yeah, uh, it's not interactive in augmented reality though. That's still to be figured out. Um, and that would actually probably be WebXR, which is what Ronald was talking about earlier. We could do really incredible things with that. Um, oh, next please. So this is the project, another project that I worked on um, for uh, Morphosource. Uh, this is the Aleph viewer. It's built with uh, A-Frame, which is uh, Mozilla's um, open source technology. Um, so on the top left here, we've got a, a, a frog uh, that's um, digitized using, um, was compressed using uh, Draco, uh, which is Google's compression format for GLTF files um, and their tool allows you to kind of uh, annotate points but if, if you shift click you can connect the points up and measure things as well um, and on the, on the bottom left we've got and bottom right we've got two views of a, a volume uh, so we can see this true skull in uh, both slices and in, uh, in points uh, and you can annotate on the slices and switch to the points view and see where those annotations you know are uh, so yeah um, and then in the top right this is the thing i briefly mentioned earlier which is um the interoperable annotation demo so that uh that spaceman is a kind of a favorite of the model viewer community so i i opened it up in in aleph um annotated left and right hand and then copied and pasted the annotations uh i had to kind of do a bit of 
uh, plumbing to get it to work, but uh, Model View has got a nice kind of um, API, so it's, it was pretty straightforward. Um, Sorry, I'm, I'm switching just on there, just so we um, we, we get to and leave some space for, for questions. Right, um, thanks. Yeah, I'll pick up. Um, so on the theme of annotation mentioned earlier, we have a couple of examples from recent calls. So Ed just showed from the LF um, viewer uh, some annotation work. This is an example from the collection for the uh, Cleveland Museum of Art. It's on Sketchfab. The link I is, sorry, there. I think this is the Oakshot uh, Institute. Uh -huh. Thanks, Tom. Quite right. <laughs> Same model artist, uh, different, yes. <laughs> different collection. The Oakshot uh, collection in Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota. And um, it's a special time to remember that city in many ways. Uh, but it was interesting to see, and it's animated and nicely presented on Sketchfab. Um, and uh, Tom, if we could go to the next slide then. And this is an example from the Smithsonian's um, Voyager viewer, uh, one of their many 3D models of this being the, um, the Wright Brothers flyer. Uh, but last year being the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, there is Neil Armstrong's spacesuit command module from Apollo 11 and a few other things. Uh, but we have at least three uh, key examples from recent time of annotation in 3D models, as well as metadata with them and uh, some other aspects, which we hope to uh, catalog at a finer detail and see what's similar and, and so forth. Could you go to the next, please? Thanks. And we'll find just our final uh, gallery slide is a shout out to Hubs by Mozilla. Uh, and we had Elgin, uh, who's presented, who's shown there presenting, and there's a link to her video of this. What's amazing about this, this is all in WebXR. It'll run on modern smartphones and uh, mob, uh, tablets. And you're seeing some examples. You can put 2D images, video, PowerPoint slides, 3D models, and interact with all of this in environments that are changeable. And they can be mappable onto uh, scanned uh, real world models. Um, but I've put PowerPoint in there before and a couple of us, Tom Ed and I interacted with bits of statues, put heads on ones. So if you want to bring Venus de Milo's arms back to her, this is one of the areas where you could at least try it out. And with that, I think we might close and thank you everyone. And uh, Tom, Ed, you want to say anything else before we open to questions? No, I'm, I'm very happy. Just yeah, please do contact us and, and tell us what you're working on and what you think. And join us. Uh, sorry, Ed. No more comments from me. <laughs> so, uh, Great, thanks for changing the format. Um, I'm sure you all know you can switch into gallery view at the top of the screen. And then uh, we should be able to open the mics up or uh, go to chat or both. Anyone wanna jump in? We have one comment about cross-pollination in the gaming and IIIF 3D communities. Truman, do you want to say any more about that point, or the link to Vimeo? Okay, maybe it'll stand on its own. <laughs> so uh, Chris had asked earlier also about um, putting a link to the slides in here. It was in the slides Slack channel, but it's also in the chat area now. But let's, uh, let's go around. Uh, Ed and Tom and I can recap nicely, but just wanted to know if you have any outstanding questions. We've, we've done it. No more questions. Yeah, yeah we've stunned everyone. Um, I will recap a point from uh, earlier. It's, is it, oh, Eric Champion, thanks for the point. We should probably add another LOD, which is linked open data. So we have levels of detail LOD and I was worried about the ambiguities, but for the slide about um, current state of IIIF 3D, we'll, we'll try to squeeze that in. Also a point, if I may, um, Tom, you were pointing out the um, elevation API. Uh, in the maps um, group session yesterday, I just thought if anyone here is on from the maps group or was at that session, that would be something 
they may want to play with a little bit more. Or we might want to have more of a conversation with the maps group on that thing. Mm. Don't know if you want to say anything else about it. Um, I, I think that there's some interesting stuff to, to be done with elevation data and, and maps. There's some quite nice artistic projects. There's a cartographer at NASA who plays around by adding current elevation data to historical maps, uh, USGS uh, maps, um, US um, geological survey maps. Um, so there's yeah, some interesting things I think uh, that could be done. Um, yeah. yeah, and uh, an obvious shout out um, to the um, museum group. And that was a great session yesterday as well. Um, but as we point out, we're still laying down the, the framework and the tracks that we hope will become eventually IIIF 3D, but the museums and any 3D archive are certainly all trying to engage with this world and we hope to help mm -hmm. work together on that. Maybe um, if anyone wants to ask about the user stories part of it, that could be, uh, if, if no one understood that, then yeah. We do have a couple of questions in the in the, the chat specifically. Uh, one is about the, the slides being posted. I don't know if that link was shared. Um, it was, but I'll do it again. That would be, you yeah, may as well, we'll do that. Um, um, is cross-pollination happening among the gaming and AAAF 3D communities? Um, we've had um, a couple of people on the calls um, from that zone, but not. I don't think we've done anything specifically um, to reach out um, to gaming um, communities. I think um, it would be interesting maybe to get Kronos on a future call. Um, yeah. They might be able to speak to that a little bit. Also mm -hmm. Unity, you know, I'm sure we could ask them. They've got an office in Brighton, <laughs> just go knock on the door. Yeah, they're definitely the, uh, the, the gaming and um, visual effects industries have, have done a lot of work in color management for 3D, uh, as well as um, optimization and streaming and, um, you know, just showing people what they, they need and not crashing your computer. Um, can you possibly expand a bit about licensing? You mentioned it in regards to interoperability, what the challenges might be. Um, I'm happy to say something about that or Ed, Ed and Ronald. Um, Let's start, please. I think, um, oh, yeah, let's go, go for it. Well, I, I think the, the open access makes things easier from my perspective as a developer. Um, you know, we have, so the IIIF does have an authentication API. Um, and I guess at some point we're going to run into how does that work with 3D content? Um, so, yeah, and what kind of downloads are we making available uh, in a viewer? And how do we control what downloads are available? And all the, the, that side of things. So, yeah, it can, it's, but a lot of this is quite well trodden ground. Um, you know, Triple F's been at this since kind of 2012, 2013. So, um, I think a lot of what we've done with images uh, somebody's server or is it ingesting the file, for example, how Sketchfab does where you have to upload the data uh, and then when you make it available again um, what, what license is, is it under? Is it under a license? Um, I think open access is a parallel conversation for, you know, cultural organizations right now, along with uh, digitization and, you know, many other um, conversations. And it's, it's just, it's it interlinked with, with what I think we're doing here. I'll, I'll um, plug a website that I've worked on with Neil Stimler and um, Michael Weinberg of the Engelberg Center at NYU, um, which is open, no, glam3d.org, uh, which covers a bit about open access copyright in relation to, to 3D. Uh, Neil and Michael are both experts in the area, so uh, there's some good content in there. Um, any more nice links being shared? Um, so one thing that uh, sounds, I guess, sounds obvious, but uh, in IIIF, it's long been a stipulation that if they're if you're making a viewer for IIIF content, 
then if there's an attribution or an, I, think, I think it's now been called required statement in the manifest, then you must display it. Um, uh, I'm not sure what the repercussions are if you don't, but, it's, uh, but yeah, it's, it's, you, you're able to put in, put this metadata in your manifest and uh, the rule is that if it's there, you must display it. So you, you can never kind of, kind of guarantee people are going to follow the rules, I suppose, but um, doesn't mean you don't have them. <laughs> um, oh yeah, Tessie pointing out that CS2EP is also uh, tackling copyright um, and open access um, imminent, imminently to be published, I believe. Um, so I think there'll be more and more useful information about this and practical advice, I think, is the other uh, useful thing. Um, so if, if, if Tassie is able to say um, how much interaction is going on with the uh, Digital Preservation Coalition, because it looks like they're doing a lot of work together and if they combine their forces, that would be great on these areas. Sorry, Tassie, okay. to pick on you. Oh, no, 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 it's totally fine. Um, I think that we have not integrated as much as we could, and that's one of the things we want to do in sort of the second phase of turning CS3DP into also a running community. So. No, that's perfect. Thanks. Awesome. I think there's a point. So Josh Hadro had to go, and thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, practical matter, it, uh, Meg or Glenn or anyone else, is there some way to capture the uh, chat easily? Yeah, the chat will be um, recorded along with the video, um, so it'll be fine. Thanks, Glenn. Sorry. <laughs> on you. Yes. Cheers. Are there, um, so we have uh, a few minutes and then we might want to have a segue to the next session if anyone's going, uh, hopefully you will. Um, any closing thoughts or challenges? We have at least one bagpipe player on here. You could pipe us out, Chris. No, that's shameless, sorry. <laughs> well, we don't have a theme music for the group yet. Maybe we ought to work on that. Yeah, definitely. Well, hopefully it's been interesting for everyone. Hope so. Yeah. And, you know, feel free to ask us anything. Uh, if, if something occurs to you after the call, then just hit, hit us up on the 3D channel on the, on the IIIF Slack. We can answer it on there. And check out the calendar for our next uh, meeting, which will be uh, in a few weeks later in the month. Do you remember mm -hmm. it's the 21st, guys? I'd have to check my calendar. Um, okay. There's a question about um, the pandemic. Has the pandemic made you release any, realize any new priorities, challenges with 3D? Um, I, I've seen personally an increase in inbound uh, interest in publishing 3D. Um, from people getting in contact with me at Sketchfab who uh, hadn't previously, some specifically mentioning the fact that they don't have their physical venues open. So they're along with other digital content looking to do more uh, online. Um, I don't know if anybody else, you know, on the, on the call can say something about that. Um, I've had an inquiry about um, viewing 3D object or well, scanned objects in augmented reality for kind of pedagogical purposes. Uh, so if you're remotely studying objects, it can be helpful to see them life-size. Um, so, but yeah, that's one, one way 3D is kind of uh, yeah, becoming more of more interest during the lockdown, I think. Mm. Yeah, and I mean, we've had a, a problem um, with a number of our museums and others. We've heard uh, reports of um, course not being able to get to the material so only in a few cases so some people may be working on their um, their techniques but they can't get access to it so they're chomping at the bit but some are brushing off old ones old models and re reprocessing things yeah maybe a good uh, good theme for um, an upcoming call um, yeah. maybe not necessarily about the pandemic but kind of yeah the uh, access um, that 3d affords Idea. Kathy says we've had more uh, requests for space digitization via things like Matterport. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's lots of chat about virtual tours and how they're great and how they're terrible. Lots of different opinions. Yeah, Mozilla Hubs are massive. Uh, so 
um, like it's okay to mention this, so Sophie's working on a, a hubs gallery for her students at the moment at the college where she teaches and that they can show their kind of final end of year work in that. Uh, and it's, it's incredibly motivating for them. Um, mm. So yeah, that, that's, that's a really big one, I think. Um, social VR spaces. Um, I, I, um, I encourage you to check out the Museum of Other Realities. It's pretty awesome. Uh, that's another one. Yeah, and Eric uh, said something following up on what you said, Ed, about AR and missing 3D pieces being put back together. And you may recall that's something that you can experiment in hubs, Mozilla hubs, but there are other people thinking about this. And ultimately, just like putting manuscript pieces back together in 2D with IIIF, a future IIIF 3D should hopefully let us put together broken pots and other things. This has definitely been on our discussions radar. Uh -huh. Maybe we can squeeze in one, one final question from Susan Douglas. Could you comment briefly on the apparent built-in obsolescence of the various products available? Um, I can speak about Sketchfab um, briefly. Sketchfab is um, a commercial company. Um, so I've you know, talked about this, this with people uh, variously. Um, I always frame Sketchfab as a publication platform. It's not where you put your 3D uh, as a repository. Um, it's where you put it when you want to uh, give people access to it. Um, some things that are relevant then are that you always have a backup. The original files are uh, somewhere else. Sketchfab can be seen as a backup, but not you know, your uh, specific backup. Um, and the data being copyrights, for example, remaining with the uploader. Um, it, it, it can get more complicated with that. I'm happy to answer questions directly if people are uh, interested. I should also say that Sketchfab obviously wants to be around and not become obsolete. <laughs> so it's actively S sustainability is, is the is the key word, isn't it? How how do we mm -hmm. how do we ensure these platforms are sustainable? Um, should we yeah. um, should we wrap up because we're over, crossing over uh, the yeah. next one? Thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. Ed. Cheers, guys. See ya.